guys, Sherry here from No Facts Game Crew. How's it going? Yin, how's it going? So this is going to be a Yin reading for March the 9th until the 20th. Hope you're all doing well. So I think I'm going to do a um, crystal ball for you. So five by five grid, um, the distant past, recent past, present, near future, and uh, distant future or final outcome. Four corner stone cards that represent the main energy of the reading and then one center card which is the main energy from the universe so I'm using my deck here if you want to order my cards you can uh, email me at sherry shock at hotmail.com um, the one deck is $75 or you can pay $100 which includes a twin flame reading alright so let's begin so the first cornerstone card is the seven of cups so Feeling confused, feeling lost, not knowing which way to go, knowing what you want, not knowing how to get there. So the main energy that the feminine is bringing in is a sense of confusion. The message is to follow your heart. Can you see that all right? Next card is the Three of Wands. Um, I think that in the Twin Flame reading, the feminine, yes, she did. She had this in the past position as well. Um, feeling encouraged, feeling like you're on the right path, feeling, um, you know, starting to see the payoff. Um, yeah, doing what you love. So even though there's confusion, not knowing which way to go, she still feels drawn in a certain direction. The Knight of Pentacles taking it one step at a time, um, knowing what you want not rushing ahead, planning, and movement. So, nice. You know, it's like she's determined to reach it to, you know, reach her goal. <clears throat> okay, next we have Six of Cups. So, there may have been a moment of reunion in the past. Um, she, There's a sense of achievement there. But just, you know, almost like walking on eggshells to make it to that point. Um, now, this may mean that she's also moving towards union. That is her ultimate goal. And cornerstone card, crown chakra. So, it seemed to me like in the Twin Flame reading, there's this... Um, ultimate illumination that is happening with the feminine you know this religious factor the twin flame connection is all about awareness through pain um, so as a crowning energy you know the crown chakra is I know she receives illumination um, she learns a lesson she sees the light um, And it has to do with reunion and losing her path. Okay, so the recent past position, yeah, okay. So Seven of Swords, at the heart of the Twin Flame connection was deception. Not being able to trust, feeling like you're being lied to. It was a shared energy. Yeah, and this was also important as well. Um, meditating, going within, listening to your inner voice. Um, feeling that intuitive guidance. The Knight of Swords is again movement forward, but it's a very scattered energy, so it could represent her being surrounded a bit by chaos, and in the center of it all, there is this sense of consciousness, awareness, um, you know, there's a deceptive energy there and it's almost like she wants to control it and that might be the problem next 
the Knight of Fire, I mean the King of Fire, that's ironic. Well, it's a synchronicity that this card has showed up three times in the past position. So this could represent the masculine, but I think she takes control. She pursues pro possibly, um, you know, spiritual um, idea, becomes the leader, gathers a following even, um, stands her ground in the chaos. Wow, 11 11 card, right beneath the crown chakra. So, you know, this is your twin flame, um, seeing synchronicity, synchronicities that awaken you to other forces. So, again, even though there's deception there, somebody might be trying to trigger her. There's control, power, um, and belief in the twin flame connection. Present position, we have the Fool card coming in, taking a leap of faith, brand new start, um, having no fear because you know, and not being attached because you have no history. So it's right below the two sevens there of confusion, not being able to trust. She surrenders. She lets go. Sun. Nice. These are very similar energies of returning to innocence, new beginnings. So, um, didn't she get this before? I can't remember. Uh, so, you know, it's the most positive card in the deck, resounding yes. She made a decision to follow, to start a new life, a new direction, and it's bringing positive energy to her. So this is the universe card, ego. Detachment, don't let the ego get in the way. Don't let somebody trigger you. Um, say focused and determined, I guess, I don't know. Next, the Ace of Wands. New beginning, go like go time, inspiration, kundalini awakening. There you know, we have a one here and then another one on the other side. So she's really working hard on detaching from the ego and staying positive. There's this new opportunity that she's moving towards. Nice, heart chakra, right below the crown chakra and the 1111 card. So feeling unconditional love following your heart near future ace of pentacles another number one so because of that detachment because of following your heart there's this gift this new opportunity the seed of intention being planted so it could have something to do with the 3d reality the moon major arcana right below the sun so, um, yeah, facing your fears again. Um, it, we have the high priestess up there who is the ruler of the moon. You know, she feels safest in that energy. Um, she's the master of the subconscious mind. This could also be the shadow side, being triggered um, by people or things that you don't like about yourself. And it really kind of speaks to that ego there. There's that page of pentacles, okay, so sitting down, studying, planning for the future, commitment. Um, there's an opportunity there and she becomes focused on it. Five of Wands, not feeling like you're good enough, feeling challenged, um, overcoming obstacles, but they're minor challenges, minor obstacles, you can do it. Five of Swords, Triggers, so we got two fives in a row. Um, you know, when you're starting something new, there's fear that goes along with it. Will I be able to, to accomplish this, right? Will I make it to the end? And I think this is just that negative self-talk. 
follow what you, your heart, do what you love. Whatever choices you make will only be good ones because you are doing what you want to do. Okay, so final row, cornerstone card, six of swords is uh, moving to calmer waters. I like that because there's so much chaos and triggering mental stuff. And so she moves to a calmer space. We got the five to the six. Next, six of pentacles and another six. So she becomes open and giving where she had that gift to her. She now turns around and gives to others. She realizes that in order to receive, you must give. So receptivity. The Two of Wands uh, is expansion, seeing things from a higher perspective. Um, this openness, this abundance, really kind of uplifts her and expands her. Nice. Another Two, Two of Cups, spiritual union, twin flame connection. Because you gave, because you opened yourself up, because you walked away from chaos, found balance, um, this connection came to you. Final cornerstone card, strength. So I think what this, you know, the entire reading is about an internal resolve to, you know, not be triggered to find calmness within the storm. Um, and you're being recognized for your strength as a final uh, cornerstone card. That's beautiful. Okay, so let's pull a card from Miss and Mermaids as a final message. That one, all right. Oh, okay, actually, that's kind of ironic because I said I almost felt like the masculine and feminine final messages should have been reversed because the masculine got this in the twin flame. So it's all about looking after yourself. Um, that's exactly what I was saying, you know. Don't be triggered by the ego. Don't feel that you need to be number one. Um, have the confidence to express yourself. So I'll go ahead and read it again. Oh my gosh. Okay. So close your drought. No, yep, that's right. Okay, close your. No, that's the wrong one. Sorry. What number is this? Number one. Miss and Mermaids. Number one. Okay. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a spaz. But it is number one though. So, you know, this brand new start is there. But it, the message is to look after yourself. Take a minute. Um, and remember, we got that breathe card in the Twin Flame reading in the near future. So you move to calmer waters, calmer states, not triggered. Close your drowsy drooping eyes and come with me to paradise. Leave your cares for just an hour to focus on floating flowers. Let the water soothe your flesh and leave your rested fit and fresh. A fair mermaid drifts languidly among the tangle of lily pads in the tranquil lagoon. A single pink lotus blossom adorns her hair. A second floats nearby in the pond. So relaxed is she that her slight movements do little to disrupt the surface of the water. So the meaning is make an effort to relax. Stop what you're doing and take a deep breath. It's time to relax. You're not selfish, and that could be a blessing. Helping your loved ones is an important part of who you are. But sometimes it's okay to set aside your worries and with about others and take time for yourself. Maybe you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed. Try not to let it wear you down. Instead, try these relaxation techniques. Close your eyes and imagine a personal paradise. What do you see, hear, and feel? Let yourself become engulfed in these sensations. Allow your, your breathing to become slow and even. And notice your energy flow through your body. This will help you feel refreshed and rejuvenated. Number two, take a hint from the mermaid friend and let yourself be soothed by calming water. A walk near a beach or a lake or a rest near a bubbling fountain can bring you inner tranquility. Number three, are you finding it difficult to relax? A change in environment can be the most helpful. And reducing stress. A short getaway for some pampering at a spa uh, could be just what your body and mind need to chase away the stress. Yes. All right, guys, I do hope this helps. Please like, share, and subscribe. All right, cheers.